Hey, Wes, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for that drawing. It was wonderful. Incredible. Yeah, it was good. Hey, Rodelf, how's it going? Awesome. Paper. Welcome. Come on in. Have a seat. Oh, awesome. Hi, Steven. <laughs> All right, Fluffy. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, man, what am I teaching today? Hmm, this, this, and this. Good. That's right. Ah. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow, what a name. <laughs> Maybe I should steal it. Uh, I don't know how. How do I do that? Seems complicated. Above my pay grade. Some sense. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, fine. Fine, let's start. Let's start the class. Is everything the right size? Things looking good? Uh, this, this. Where's the music? Boring music right here, don't worry. Here we go. Okay. Hello, welcome to uh, Substitute Calculus 3. Um, we are in the differentiation part of analyzing functions of several variables class. We're basically going to go through and try to do Calc 1's differential calculus in the context of several variables and we're gonna see some of the new phenomena that arise one of those that we've already seen is that uh, a function of several variables has no one well-defined rate of change slope it's got a couple slopes in fact, it's got infinitely many. If, it all depends on which direction you decide to go with it. Hello, gaming. How's it going? All right. So that's one of the things we've, we've witnessed. I'll repeat it and repeat it today because it's so important conceptually. But um, there's one thing that you can do to package the separate rates of change altogether, the partial derivatives. And I told you how to do that. You put the two partial derivatives next to each other, put, a, put some commas between them, and call it a vector. What a genius move. By doing that, you get this thing, the gradient vector. So that's the topic we're going to talk a little bit more about the gradient today and see how it uh, shows up in um, formulas that you might be interested in. Okay, so that's the topic for today. And then uh, the, the chapter is 14.5. We've already mentioned some of the things that I'm going to say today uh, last class, but I'm going to go into it deeper. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the most important fact about the gradient vector. That it's uh, perpendicular to level sets, the level set. Okay. The second thing will be discuss discussion about the fact that the gradient vector points in the direction of steepest increase. It's good to know in life. Especially want to optimize your path towards the top. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, okay, you're trying to say, get me to say your name. Thank you. That's, that, that's, that's incredible. All right. Next, um, the gradient vector will help us very easily write down tangent spaces to level sets of functions. And then we'll do some examples to be amazed at how far we've come in life. 
And then we'll sort of switch topics a little bit. Not so much, but a little bit. Gradient will still show up. But uh, we'll talk about applying a several variable function to a parameterized path. And this is actually one specific instance of the chain rule, which will be the bulk of um, Thursday's lecture. Okay, so it's like perfectly most systematic best lecture ever on this topic. All right, so write this, write this down. This is what? Yeah, Professor Peter agrees. You see that? Hey, everyone, check out Professor Peter. You gotta do these shout outs. Yep. It was just online, but is not, I guess, anymore. Okay, so let's start. Let's start. So what I need to um, make sure my students understand is okay, there is there is something in Calc 3 that I know even smart the good students, which all of my students are, even my substitute students, struggle with. And that is just keeping the various objects square in their minds. What is a what? Yeah. You get this? You get this running question? What is this? What is that? And you got to keep them vocabulary terms square in your minds. You got to get the object classes right. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this one more time. Look at this picture here. This picture has various things on it. First of all, there's a function lurking here. The function is f of x, y. Two variable function. That's the function. I write that down. Next. The function produces a graph of the function. That's this yellow thing. The equation of that graph is z, auxiliary new variable, Elevation equals f of x, y, that function. You plot those x, y, z points that obey this riddle, you'll get this yellow surface cartoon. Okay, that's the yellow thing. It's a visual representation of the original function, which was a function of two variables. Once you have this graph, that's, the, that's this yellow thing. You can then ask, what is its tangent plane at a given spot? Here's a spot on the graph. What's the tangent plane there? Well, it's this blue thing that you can you, you sort of think of as the best linear function graph that approximates the hill at that point. And last time I taught you how to write its equation down. So I'm going to I'm going to repeat that right here. The tangent planes equation was built out of the partial derivatives placed in delicate spots. You put the first partial at the point a comma b evaluate at the point a comma b that's just a number multiply that by x minus a by doing this you're ensuring that the tilt of the plane in the x direction is correct is in agreement with the slantiness of the hill in the x direction which that slantiness is what this partial derivative is, that slope, x slope of the hill. Then it's an equation of a plane, so it's going to have some y garbage too. And what's the coefficient, the slope in the y direction? That's by definition the partial in, with respect to y at this given point a comma b times y minus b. And then in order to get, so now you've got the, the slantiness of the plane down correctly. 
And now you just gotta drag it so that it's going through that point of contact with the surface. And so that's why you have this constant at the end, which is just f of a, b, the output of the function. So this here looks like a bunch of garbage. Look at what's a number and what's the variable. Uh, number, number, uh, number, number, number. And so this is a plane. From the beginning of the semester, you saw how to write equations of planes. This is going to be a plane. And that is the tangent planes equation. Wow, incredible. All right, good. So now, now that you've got all these pieces square in your minds, I'm now going to do one last thing. I'm now going to say, what if you were to translate this situation into the contour plot world? Okay, the contour plot of a two variable function lives in R2. And this point here on the hill is now represented by a point a comma b in R2. It's like you're looking at the whole thing from above. All right. So here's a question. What's the simple relationship between the contour curves and the hill? Simple. You slice the hill with level surfaces, planes. You hold Z constant at different elevations and you get the stacks of curves by slicing the hill. And what you draw are those stacks, the, the stack of curves. You kind of draw them right there in parallel. Okay? So that's what's going on here. Awesome. So I want you to be very very careful about what's a what in this uh, discussion. Because now what I'm going to say is let's write the two partial derivatives and separate them with a comma. In other words, let's write down the gradient. And as you'll see the book, the book will say, if you're specifying a particular point, it'll, it'll tell you to plug in A and B in some way. So, if, for example, it'll write this kind of garbage. And then you just sort of plug in A and B into these ex partial derivative expressions. This is a specific vector, folks. Specific vector. All right. That's what it is, I am a toaster. And now we're gonna sort of see what it means spiritually. We're gonna see what does the gradient mean? What you do, just for now, I'm just gonna tell you what to do. Take that vector, notice it has two components. It's a vector in R2, not a vector in R3. The gradient is best understood in this contour world. Don't try to put the gradient back into R3 where this graph lives. Common error that causes confusion. Put the gradient right here at the input point. Actually, let me, let me draw it more accurately. It goes up. Put it there. I'll tell you why. Well, actually, let's let's make the gradient vector a different color. Um, let's make it golden. Okay, golden. Change the color on your note cards. Okay, why did I draw it like that? It's for the following reason. I'm now going to shade in, I'm going I'm to highlight for you the particular level curve that we're at right now. 
this one. Z equals the appropriate level curve that we're at, which by the way, is simply F of AB. That's the level curve that the point A comma B has to be in. Right? What elevation is at A comma B? F of A comma B. So what elevation should I be holding constant if I want to be in that level curve? F of A comma B held constant. Let Z be that. It's that level curve. And so now I'm going to do something geometric. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at our situation. Actually, let me bring this dot a little bit down right there. Okay, it's, it's now there. Did I, did I mess up? It's right there. Okay, take Z equals F of AB level slice now. I'm going to draw that. It's a sideways plane, right? Take that level slice in the 3D model. And you're going to get your level set. Yeah, this level level curve. Viewed from above, it's this z equals it's this purple thing. Okay. So you get that curve in the z equals uh f of a comma b level slice. Question what do you get when you intersect that horizontal plane with the tangent plane, which is coming in at a tilt? What kind of a thing do you get, class? You intersecting this tangent plane with the level slice. What kind of a thing do you get? Is it some weird ass parabola? Is it all twisted? Is it a, a dot? Is it, um, is, it's a line, Jumble. It's a line. You're intersecting two planes. Here's a question. What do you get when you do Z equals F of AB intersect the tangent plane? You get a particular line. Any guesses? In geometrically, intuitively, which line must it be when viewed from above? It's a line in the Z equals constant level slice. It's a tangent line. It's got to be tangent to the hill or to what we're studying. And so it's tangent to the level curve. It's a tangent line to the level curve. So I'm gonna write this equality. At the point that you're studying. So I'll draw it. This thing. So when you take, in other words, when you take the level play, the level curve of the tangent plane, you get the tangent line. The tangent space to the slice. Wow, very powerful. Very simple geometric picture, but it's good to write it out carefully. And now I'm going to do this intersection mathematically. So let's do some mathematics now, not just bullshit, just reasoning stuff. So math. Time for math. I'm intersecting two things now. I'm just trying to get my hands on that blue, blue line now, all right? I'm gonna get, trying to get, get my hands on this. 
so that you can do your homework and stuff. Let's do a math. Level plane Z equals F of AB. Tangent plane. Oh, let me just copy and paste that, that big old thing. Humongous equation. Tangent plane. I'm going to, I'm going to solve this system simultaneously and eliminate variables. Because you see, Z is right here and Z is right here. So I can put the F of AB here and I'll get some cancellation. This part will cancel with that one. And so here's what you're left with. You get zero equals just this stuff. Let me write that. Notice, this is an equation in the xy plane now. Of course, I told you it's a line. It's this line. The tangent line to the level, cur level slice. The level sets tangent space at that point of, of concern, A comma B. Okay, its equation is right here. Okay, I just found you that equation. Look how pretty it is. It's, it puts the partial, x partial in front of x. It puts the y partial in front of y. And then it just shifts the x and y so that when you plug a comma b in, you get a point that satisfies the equation, right? You put x equals a in, y equals b, satisfied. So it, it gets, the, the two partials are getting the slant of the line right and then the shifting is just making sure the lines at the right spot All right so these are the two this pair of numbers is determining the slant of the line okay notice the lines equation the lines equation coefficient of x is the x partial of our original original function whose level set we are studying and the coefficient of y is the y partial now i want you to go back to the beginning of the semester when you were talking about linear spaces and how to write their equations so i'm going to have to ask you to go back in your notes just a little interlude now Go back in your notes about how to describe linear spaces. Okay, just go back there. In R3, which is, by the way, now we're in R2. This is R2 mathematics. It's very good to, um, in all this discussion, to, to place where the math is happening. What is the world in which you're studying this thing? We're in R2, contour plan, the map of the, of the uh, national park. That's where we are in this discussion right now. Okay. But you probably learned in the beginning of class, which before I was a substitute teacher, that like, you know, if you want to know a, a plane, you got to give me a normal vector. Which is probably like an A, a B, and a C or something. And then a point on it, plus a point. And then the way you assemble the plane that's normal to that vector and through the point was some something like you place these in front of 
A, a B, C is bad because I used A and B here. Divorce the notation. Separate. It's an interlude. Separate notation. Different note card. You gotta like figure this out. You figure this out from the point. Is this ringing a bell? That the normal, the way you read off a normal vector for a plane is you look at the coefficients of x, y, and z. Does this ring a bell, folks? It was before my time. Yes. Okay. But there was nothing special to being an R3. Like for R2, you can do the same thing. Like um, alpha x plus beta y equals gamma. This is an equation of a line in R2. What is its normal? How do you read off a normal vector to that line? You read off the coefficients. Is always. It's a vector, a vector. You probably didn't read a, You probably didn't learn about vectors, but they're a little bit more advanced. Uh, uh, if you were in my class, I'd teach you about vectors. It's a vector which is normal to that line. I'm just reminding you of the coefficient of x, y, z, w, z. That vector is always pointing normal to the linear thing that the equation is cutting out. That's the general principle I'm just reminding you of. The general uh, fact. Okay? So now, that was an interlude. Let's go back to our tangent line that we just successfully written down. This line, this equation in R2, it's a line. Look, it's only got X and Y and numbers. That line is this tangent line to the slice. The, the level set. But what are its coefficients? What's a normal vector? to that line's equation. That line, what's a normal vector? You read off what's in front of the x and what's in front of the y. And if you read that off very carefully, this is the x coefficient and this is the y coefficient. Read this with your glasses. Does that help you read it? Put those in a comma, make a little vector out of that. That's the gradient. And so what I've just convinced you of perfectly is that the gradient vector is normal to the tangent line of the slice. That's why when I wrote, when I drew the gradient way back here, that's why I drew it normal, perpendicular to the level set that we are concentrating at. That's why I drew it that way. See how it's perfectly perpendicular? You see that perfect right triangle right here? I mean, right angle? Look at that. That is clearly perfect right angle. The tangent line is over here. The gradient points perpendicular to the tangent line. Write that very important first principle, all right? So I just successfully did the first thing. It, by the way, it didn't matter how many variables we had. X, Y, Z? Fine. Now the level set of a three-variable function is 
a larger object. We'll do some examples later, don't worry. But I just want to tell you that the fact that we had x and y two variables in this setting, a function of two variables, only helps in us being able to imagine what's going on. But it's still the same algebra exercise. That the, the, the gradient will point perpendicular to the tangent space of a level set of a function. Okay, let me confuse you on purpose now, because I've heard this from many students before. Excellent students, star students, okay? They will sort of jumble the slogan and they'll say, okay, I have a two variable function. Here's its gradient. It's a vector with two, two entries. You know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that vector back in R3 and I'm going to stick it right here somehow. I don't know how they do it. They stick it right here. And then they like, they like, they get confused because they say, hold on. That vector doesn't look perpendicular to the yellow surface. But that's not what we're saying. We're saying that the gradient is perpendicular to the pink slice, not to the yellow surface. Only in the slice are we working. That's why it's best to think about it all happening in the contour world. All right? Don't confuse yourself like this. This vector will not look per... When you place it on the hill, it doesn't look perpendicular to the hill. First of all, it has the wrong number of components. So you got to think about that already as a problem. Okay? Category error. Okay. You like the glasses trick? Yeah, it helps, of course. It helps you focus on, on, on things. So this was an A plus right here. It's perpendicular to the level sets of a function not to the function's graph. What is a what? Next, number two. The gradient, in fact, not only is normal to the level curve, it points in the direction of increase. Best increase. For this, I'm gonna recall something from last time, directional derivative. So let's add that into our discussion now. Number two. Yes. The gradient at AB is normal to the level curve. Good job. Professor. But if I tell you I've got a line and then a, a, in the plane and a vector going normal, there's actually two directions. You could be going that way or the other way. There are two perpendicular directions. And now I'm going to tell you which way the gradient chooses. The gradient will point in the way that increases the function fastest. Which, which way? The gradient vector points in the direction of steepest increase. That will determine which way. Yeah, you remember? I was just telling you in previous lecture, but now I'm going to convince you, all right? Notice I wrote the word direction. And last time I talked about directional derivatives. The rate of change of f of xy temperature if I move this way or that way or the other way. Right? Okay. So recall from last time, we're going to sort of see, witness this right now. 
We talked about the directional derivative of a function at a given point in a given direction. This u is a unit vector anchored at, for us, at the point a comma b in the plane. Okay, let's go back to this contour plot. Cartoon. I'm going to erase the gradient for now. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to focus on this point right here. How many directions could this person who is gaming geek, who's lost in the woods, how many directions viewed from above can they go? A whole circle. You got to give me a unit direction, a unit vector. Here's some random unit vector that you could decide to go in. But once you choose a direction, it makes sense to ask, how is your elevation changing? What's the slope of the hill in that direction? And I told you that calculation is simple. All you do is you write the vector in component form. Let's go back. You write this vector in component form. And then you write down this linear combination of the partial derivatives. This much of the x derivative with a, with a b plugged in to get numbers, right? And then this much of the y derivative. This is the rule. This was the rule. This is the formula for directional derivative. Der derivative in of f of x of our temperature function in the direction of u at the point a b and that's the formula so now what i'm going to do is something really weird i'm going to ask which I'm going to first of all, I'm going to rewrite this uh, formula using fancy dot product mathematics from your uh, early part of this semester. And then we're going to study that uh, expression. So let me rewrite this. Hmm. Looks like a dot product to me. A dot product of which two vectors? It is the gradient, which is the hero of today, at a comma b, dotted with the direction that you were interested in. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? All right. It's the gradient dotted with the direction that you're interested in. Simple formula. The directional derivative is simply dot with the gradient and see what you get. Very simple, elegant formula. And now I want to remind you of how to compute dot product geometrically. Interlude. Do you remember that if you have two vectors, you can do what's called a formula. You can do a formula. This dot product is actually the same as the size of the first vector times the size of the second vector times uh, something. Can someone uh, remind me? What is the correction factor? It's not quite this easy. But there's a little bit of a fudge factor on the right hand side. Cosine of the angle between. Exactly jumble, exactly smash time. Smash time is a, a brilliant mathematician. Uh, so I'm happy that you remember that. Good, good job. 
you get full credit. Full credit. Cosine of the angle between the between the two vectors. Exactly. So now here's the question. Let's apply this formula to this directional derivative. Let's get let's see it. Let's just see it in action. Okay. Apply it. Apply this. Be applied mathematicians, right? Let's be applied. This is what an applied mathematician does. They take a formula, they apply it in a context. We get this. The directional derivative of our function at the point a, b, I'm not going to repeat it all the time, is dot product with gradient. Beautiful formula. But that's the same as the size of the gradient times the size of u times the cosine of the angle between. But when we're taking direction derivative, how big is this uh, is this uh, vector u? I mean, we're we're normalizing. Well, how big is the vector u? Anybody? One. It's a unit vector. Yeah, so what would we get? Just following our nose. We would get the norm, the magnitude of the uh, gradient vector times the angle with which the direction meets the gradient. your relative direction with respect to the gradient. Gradient is this golden arrow. It's this angle. You're supposed to be taking cosine of that angle and multiplying it by the size of the gradient. That's the directional derivative in your direction, u. So here's a question. If you wanted to maximize the directional derivative, get you that, that, that biggest increase, max out that derivative, which direction should I go? I want to max out that directional derivative, right? That's right. Max that thing out. Max this out. Well, hold on. That means we need to maximize this thing. Max this thing out. But hold on. The gradient is just a single vector that I can compute in any given example. Right? So this thing here is just one particular number. It's the, si the, the length of the gradient vector. Hold on. So all I need to do is max out the cosine. And so what angle between 0 and pi maximizes the cosine? Think about it. Uh, not, not pi over 2. That actually minimizes it. Hmm. Actually, you can go negative. You can go cosine of pi. That starts to look like minus one. That's 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 bad. That's that's a negative maximum. Cosine zero, zero degrees is what you want. If you want to max this out, you say this. Okay, I will choose the unit vector which makes zero degrees with the gradient. In other words, the gradient 
is the direction that maximizes the directional derivative of your folk of your function with an n don't skip the n in function you will say a bad word okay i almost did got this what did i promise i promised part two the gradient points in the direction of steepest increase it maximizes gradients dir direction maximizes the directional derivative Awesome. Okay. All right. Now, what is the gradient's direction? Um, Slemon447 has it. Here, just by the way, the gradient's direction is just you normalize the vector, right? You divide it by its norm. For any vector, you have a vector, divide out by its size, its magnitude, you get the unit vector in its direction, correct? So the gradient's direction is this vector. All right? And so let's just, just for us, let's compute the directional derivative of a function in the direction of the gradient vector. Curiosity. Compute directional derivative of a function in the gradient's direction. Of course, at, you know, you're at a particular point, a comma b, always. So you're gonna get actual numbers. We'll do examples in a second here. Striking. Let's do it. The directional derivative is simply dot product with gradient. Okay. So what if u is this uh, gradient direction? It's a pretend question. What if? Just for curiosity, if u is the gradient but scaled down to a unit vector, you get this dot product. Now the dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude squared. This is called Pythagorean's theorem. And then you're going to divide by this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you do a little bit of mathematics at this stage, you will arrive at this beautiful, elegant answer. What is that steepest directional derivative achievable? Bam. It's the size of the gradient. What a hero this gradient is. Yeah? So in other words, to summarize, this gradient points in the direction of steepest increase, which is perpendicular to the direction of no increase, the level set. Number one. How much, how fast is the increase? What is that slope in that really, really steep direction? It's just the size of the gradient. How elegant is that? Beautiful. All right. Now there's one thing that I'm sure many of you are confused and irritated by. Irritating thing is this. All of what I said makes sense and goes through perfectly. As long as the gradient vector is not zero comma zero. One roll situation. Go back and just look at everything I was saying. I was drawing actual arrows. I divided by the norm of the damn thing. You see that division right there? I did that. Everything I just said, okay. Perpendicular. 
Is the zero vector perpendicular to any... <laughs> Philosophy question. I don't know. One troll situation. What if the gradient is equal to zero comma zero? What if your partial derivative in the x direction was zero and your partial derivative in the y direction is zero? What if that happened? Then it turns out that, first of all, it's a very interesting situation, which we'll learn more about next week when we optimize a function. But what this is saying geometrically is that the tangent plane of the hill is horizontal. Which, if you remember from Calc 1, was something useful to think about. And when you have a zero gradient, a lot of the things I just told you about kind of don't make a lot of sense. All right? Steepest increase. In fact, at such a point, you can go any direction and uh, your rate of change is zero. That's what the directional derivative formula will tell you. So is there a direction of steepest increase? I don't know. Maybe they're all zero. You're all going constant in all directions. In the contour plot, I'll show you what it looks like to be at a point where the gradient is zero. It looks like this garbage over here. That's the kind of thing you see when the gradient is zero. You see that the level set isn't like differentiable, isn't smooth, isn't like one line. It's like, what is its tangent line? I don't know. It's got like two of them or something. Our whole discussion kind of breaks down at this point. All right, so that's just one troll thing to keep in mind. Great. Okay, now let's look at some example. Let's look at an example now, folks. Example. I'm not going to do some real mathematics here. We'll do um, an example on uh, Desmos. How do we do an example on Desmos? I will compute some stuff just for curiosity's sake and, and it'll be fun. All right, let's see if my Desmos is up, actually. Wow, it's already there, ready for you. You seeing this? What I've drawn here is uh, the contours of this function. Write this function down, ready? You see it in that top left? Maybe I need to move this screen. You see that? You see that function? 3x minus x cubed minus 2y squared plus y to the fourth. That's f of xy. Amazing. Yeah. Notice that I'm holding it constant. C. See that C for constant? Level. If I hold it level for various different c's, like look, c equals negative 3, or c equals negative 2.5, or c equals negative 2, etc. On the second line, c equals 11 different numbers. For each of them, you'll get a contour, one of these curves on the page. This is the contour plot for this function f of xy. Not f of xy uh, plus c or something, no, no. The function's on the left side of this equality. The C is holding it level and getting these slices. What is a what? It's gonna help you later. Okay. So now, here's what we can do. We can go um, plug in. We can go to a particular point, A comma B. Let's do that. Let's go to a particular point now, A comma B. How do I do that? Well, a, a, a simple thing to do would be to just uh, um, choose uh, 
A equals uh, zero, I guess. And uh, <laughs> B equals... Uh, B equals 1. Okay? A equals 0. B equals 1. Let's do that. So, so write that in the... Uh, someone remember the function? Because I'm going to switch screens so that I can write. Someone write down this function. And then A equals 0. B equals 1. It's it's this dot. Um, you, you know where 0 comma 1 is, right? It's right... It's right, it's right there. Uh, you know where that is. Okay, good. Yeah, where was that function? Anyone got that function? Minus 2y squared. Thank you. Plus y to the fourth. The function is this. Hold it level to different c's you get the level sets. Now, study this function at a comma b, which is 0, 1. This is our red point in the xy plane. Okay, which level set will this point live in? Easy, just plug it into the damn function and see what level it is. This is the C. Okay? So if we were to go back and look at C equals minus 1's level curve. C equals minus 1's level curve? Well, it's the unique curve out of all these that's going through the point 0, 1. You see that one? And notice the curve is going straight downwards right there. You all see that? You all see the particular level curve that C equals, um, that A comma B being 0, 1 lives on? It's, it's going straight down at 0 comma 1. It's that one. Let's see whether our tangent line equation. Oh, yeah. You see this point? It's this one. I'm going to zoom back out now so that you can focus on it. Okay, let's test out our tangent line of level sets formula. Step one, always write down the gradient. The hero of the day. Well, it's the x partial and the y partial. And you know what? Just write it down for everything. 3 minus 3x squared. And then the partial with respect to y, the x stuff is held constant, so it's like a, adding a c. And then you get negative 4y plus 4y cubed. I'm old, so you got to make sure I get it right. And then at 0, 1, you get this. 3 in the x direction? No, no, no. 3, three, in, the, three in the x direction. And then... Zero in the y direction. This is the gradient vector. Now everyone, imagine the vector 3 comma 0 in your mind. Which way is that thing going? It's got 3 x component. It's going right way, right. No y component. It's going straight sideways to the right. Gradient. Let's go look at Desmos. Hmm. 
The gradient is perpendicular to the level curve at that point. And it's going rightwards, positive 3 in the x direction. Pretty long vector. That means that the function is growing very, very steep, is steepest going straight sideways. If you had to walk some direction and you were here on the map, you should go sta straight sideways. Okay? Now let's write down the tangent line equation just to verify that you get a sensible answer. The tangent line equation is 0 equals f sub x plus f sub y. Tangent lines equation. And now we just assemble it, just assemble it. So you get 3 and a 0. X minus A. Oh, what was A? 0. And um, Y minus B. Y minus B. Well, it doesn't matter, obviously. <laughs> But I want to place them so that students can do their homework. Zero. Which if you simplify, do a little bit of mathematics at this point, you get x equals zero. Now, what is the line x equals zero? It's the vertical line y-axis, which indeed is the tangent line to this level set. It's all very simple and in, uh, in agreement with what I promised. Okay? Awesome. Okay. So finally, I need to now consider a thought experiment that kind of uh, puts all of this stuff together in a nice way. Okay, so I want you to summarize for yourself the importance of the, the, the geometric meaning of the gradient vector. Pay attention to what is what. The vector lives in the same space as the input variables. The x and y world. That's where it is. And there it's telling you the direction to nudge your input in order to maximize the increase in your function's output. Okay, great. So now, I give you an option. Do you want to visualize this particular function and compare the contour plot with the um, actual uh, function? Because then we can put my uh, imaging on and we can do that. Or do you want to talk about the next topic? I'll let you decide. Yes, please. That's a to an or question. <laughs> Next topic or <laughs> visualize. Ready? So here's our function. Our function is just the left hand side. Okay, the function is the left hand side. Okay, I'm about to uh, go into the fMRI um, here. Now I gotta remember this function. Oh, don't worry. The, uh, my iPad comes with me, right? It's uh, neuro linked. All right, let's do this. I think I know how to do this. Okay, as usual, this will um, go into the wrong part of my. Uh, screen okay yep that's pretty much standard what all right good oh seems like some of the ipad is uh hmm. okay we still got this contour plot here beautiful it fits perfectly you see that see how it fits perfectly inside the screen that's really good okay all right, so now let's go to Calc 3. 
Oh, you're here. Welcome. It's, it's down to five of you. That's awesome. Let's go to Calc 3. Don't worry, I didn't ditch you. All right, here's Desmos telling us the contour plot of look where my mouse is. This is the function of two variables. When you look at a level set, you force it to be equal to a constant. And now I've let different constants produce different slices. And here's what you get. Okay, so now I'm going to plot that function, right? Let's plot that function so we know, make sure everything's in alignment. 3 times x. Z equals, notice, what is a what? We're going to get this hill, right? We're trying to get the hill. That's what we're, well, that's what we're doing. The hill is not where you want to think of the gradient vector. Okay. All right, all right, all right. You'll just get confused if you do that. Let me add this graph. Oh, did I add it correctly? Okay. Wow. Okay, look at this. It's got these two, um, uh, well, things, little dips here. And then um, it's got a little, uh, okay, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to say, it's got a, it's got a bulge right here, okay? It's got, okay, well, this, this is probably not an appropriate, okay. Um, okay, just be mature, all right? Look, it's got, it's got, it's got like a peak here. It's got two like saddles, little Pringle points. Right here and right here. Notice it's got a Pringle here, a Pringle-like point here. And then, uh, how do I go up? And then two dips down here. You see that? Now let's go back to the level sets. My iPad needs to... Okay, look, 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 look. What we're witnessing in here is the bulge the the peak part is somewhere in this part of the national park and then these are the two low po low points now we had done a calculation right here okay we had done a calculation right here a comma b right here let's draw the tangent plane of the hill right here Okay, ready? Tangent point. Zero comma one. Hill. Boom. See that? See that tangent space? I refer you to the beginning of the class now. Okay, where's our point? It's right here on this lobe right here but this is like zero comma ones in the plane and then you go to elevation whatever the elevation is there you got to plug in f of a b f of zero comma one which will be some number all right and there you get this tangent plane okay i want you to notice that this tangent plane when looked from here is straight vertical so to speak in the y direction it goes straight that way so in particular if i were to slice this with the appropriate level slice which is just straight sideways here parallel to the xy plane i would get a line that goes straight down this way straight parallel to this blue line that's what the tangent line would, would look like. And that's indeed what our calculation gave us. So you're going to have to use a little bit of your imagination, but our calculation said that the tangent line comes in and is this vertical line right here. We just fi found the tangent line to the level set using the simple gradient formula. Is it possible to scale down the height? Yes, it is. Uh, but uh, it, we can just multiply it, okay, by some number. <laughs> Mom, I'm on TV. Yes, you are. National TV. Okay, great.
So that like brings all those things together. So finally, last topic of today. Then we can move on to uh, Thursday's subject, which is a little bit different from all this gradient stuff. Okay, last topic. What if we're gonna keep, we're gonna stay in here for, because it's convenient. Okay, so here's, here's a national park or here's a temperature graph or whatever your context you like, okay? Here's our new topic. What if in this park, what if in this park, oh shoot. I got to teach you one more thing before I can move on to that next topic. I'm very sorry. Yeah, we, we're going to have to go back to um, me writing for a bit. One last thing. Sorry, one last thing. There is nothing special about two variables in this discussion. I have to, I do have to give this um, enough time. So for example, here's an example problem. Find the equation of the tangent plane, not a tangent line anymore to a level curve, but tangent plane to the surface. Well, I'll give you a surface now. Um, x squared plus y cubed plus z to the fourth equals three. At the point one, one, one on that surface. Wow, you might say you didn't teach us anything about this problem. But you see, I did. I did teach you because nothing was special about three, uh, about two variables. Let me interpret this problem for you. Yeah, let me interpret this problem for you. What is this surface? This surface is a level set. And what is the le what is it the level set what function can we use to witness this as a particular level set what's the name of the function anybody I'll give you I'll give you a name for it what is the function that we can think of this surface as a level set for. Exactly. Exactly. It is that function. Because after all, we're holding that function equal to a constant and now, instead of forming a level curve in R2, this forms a level surface in R3. You get a bubble, a blob, in R3. It's the places in the space where um, this temperature function is always 3 degrees. Whatever locations those are, they'll form a little blob in R3. I'll draw that blob. Yeah, that's this surface. And we're given a point on that surface. And it's asking us to find the tangent space of that point on that surface. Of that surface at that point. The po what I want to say is that the gradient vector is still the normal vector of this tangent plane. Step one, always. The gradient is this point. 
point is nothing special about only two directions in the previous example. It's just super general. And I'll, I'll calculate this now. F sub X is 2X. F sub Y is 3Y squared. F sub Z is 4Z cubed. And then at my point, which is on the surface, by the way, I checked that. If you plug these in, it, it works. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, it turns out. Okay, good. We're, 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 the problem is meaningful. And you get this. 2, 3, 4. The gradient points normal to the level set. So, if I'm trying to find the tangent plane, I should use this as a normal vector. This is my normal vector from the beginning of class, the first part of the semester. Will be 2 times x minus 1 plus is this 2? Is this 2? Plus 3 times y minus 1 plus 4 times z minus 1 equals 0. Here it is. This is the answer. Ah, but what if you're given something like that? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, there won't even be a point that they can ask about and see. They wouldn't even be able to finish the problem question. And see, they wouldn't even get to this part of the question. You understand? That level set is empty. That level curve doesn't exist. Great. So this is the answer to what is the equation. Find the equation of the tangent plane or an equation of the tangent plane to this blob. Notice the power here. Notice the power. I'm going to go back to teaching. There is something powerful about this uh, calculation. If I were to ask you to like plot this garbage surface, Beautiful, actually, but wow! You would you would be like, I need BMP. I need I need that. I need the third eye technology. I need I need this. He was born with it, etc. But you don't. You don't need to be able to visualize that damn thing. You can still figure out the slantiness of it, the best plane that approximates it at this particular point on it without knowing it perfectly in your mind at all. And all you, the most important piece of information from all this is, for, to do this calculation is, the gradient of a function is normal to the level set of that function. That is the lesson, main lesson of today, the geometric significance of a gradient vector. Okay, so um, I got to these three, but that's okay because the next topic is light and simple to understand conceptually, and it's just really just computational. It's the chain rule um, topic. So tomorrow or Thursday, I will discuss these two things. All right, this one's really fun. This one has a real geometric meaning, a physical meaning, and I'll try to make it fun with gaming geek being lost in the woods, running around on some uh, path. And then we'll, we'll do a calculation involving that to see that this is a very straightforward topic. Okay, so today was gradient appreciation day. The gradient of a function points perpendicular to the level set.
and it points in the direction of greatest increase, period. Okay, um, any questions about what I talked about today? Um, this was the last example I did. This will be useful for you on in uh, homework. <laughs> yeah, good job, NC. Um, Twitch 404 group here. Yes, that's the Twitch University. Um, which time are you going to be on tomorrow and Thursday? Uh, it's always not crazy in retrospect. In the beginning, it seems like Calc 3 is just filled with random... Okay, now you do this gradient and that. But the gradient is a beautiful thing. It's a vector. And it tells you something very innocent and simple about the function. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, when, when will I be on tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's a Wednesday, right? Tomorrow I do my fancy Galois theory class. It's like Calc 1, but with more derivatives, but you have to know how to handle those derivatives, right? You need to know the yoga of manipulating the partials, to, of combining them to get the directional derivatives, so on and so forth, yeah? So it's, it's, it's a double-edged statement to say it's like Calc 1, but more derivatives. How do you manipulate those derivatives? What does the the tuple of derivatives placed in a vector mean? The gradient. What does it mean? I just told you what it meant today, right? You got to build all that understanding, which is not apparent from just Calc 1. Okay. Which vertex of Nabla points in the... <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. Math online problem solving brings up a great point, which is that we use this Greek letter nabla for gradient. Which is a little bit sad, right class? Because this looks like it's a downward arrow. But please understand class, that the gradient points in the direction of increase temperature going up the hill the most the most burn in the thighs that's the direction the gradient points yet this symbol points downward is there an error in mathematics not sure what a terrible situation Well, it gets wider going up. Okay, that's that's good. Good, good. Th that saves it. Saved. Saved. <laughs> Two vertices on the top rather than one. So you increase the number of corners when you go up. These are all excellent answers. Wow. Incredible. Just geniuses in the chat. Wow. <laughs> it's a letter, yeah. Okay, okay, ready? Uh, Kappa's here. Kappa. Smash. BPS. Who makes the whole thing? Who made the third eye? By themselves. Incredible. Um... Okay, so now we have some uh, redeeming business. That's not true since um, any given partial can have negative, can be negative. Ah, see, this is a confusion. The gradient's components can be positive and negative, sure. But 
what is the output of the function doing when you move in the direction of that gradient? It increases, meaning it doesn't decrease. It could be held constant if you're in a situation of interest next week when the gradient vector is zero, but the function slope is positive, not having to do with the components of the gradient vector. Very important distinction. Okay, so strawberry. I see you. That does not make sense to me. Let me let me make sense. Let me make it sense. Okay, let's let's talk about it just real fast because I gotta educate. Okay, okay. Look, look, ravioli. You're in this national park, and pretend this is this is snow. This is snow. Okay, meaning it's at the top, mountain peak, right here. Yeah. And you're over here. Which way do you walk? In order to increase your elevation most efficiently, rapidly. Which way do you walk? That's the gradient. The gradient is the which way vector. It's not telling you output of the function or anything. It's telling you which way to walk. Well, you walk this way. And notice that that vector has a negative Y component and a positive X component. Who cares? That's the way you walk. The function, which is the elevation, will increase. Exactly. The components of the gradient vector don't have significance. What has significance is that's the direction you walk in to increase your elevation. Your elevation is increasing in that direction. What is going up? Elevation. Not the x-coordinate of, of your position or your y-coordinate of your position. No. Who cares about those? Your elevation is going up if you walk in that direction. So the gradient is a vector. It's the vector to go in so that your elevation goes up. No, 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 wrong. The partials. So th the individual partials are just telling you that if you were to walk straight sideways in the X direction, you'll go down. And if you were to walk straight sideways in the Y direction or uh, straight <laughs> upward in the Y direction, you will also go down. That's what those two being negative tells you. So it's important to remember that if all part, if both partials go down, that doesn't mean that every direction goes downwards. You, you can still have directions that go upwards if you point the other way. Right? So, um, right? Just because you found two partials, two particular directions that go downwards in a hill, doesn't mean that there are directions that there aren't any directions that go up the hill. You have to remember that the two partials are just two particular special directions that are easy for calculation. But the gradient will give you sort of a combination of those two directions that give you the upward direction for the hill. Yeah, very important. The components of the gradient don't really mean anything individually. They're making sense? No? Okay, look. Uh, Ravi, R Ravioli. Suppose you're here on the hill. Suppose you're here. 
And suppose you know that your x partial is negative. You, you notice that if you step in the one zero direction, your elevation is going down. I just want to write this direction down for you. This is one zero. Okay, and then you calculated, hey, let me go, let me go upwards in the y direction. And you calculated, wow, I'm still going downwards. You got two negative numbers, okay? I want you to look at what the what the gradient vector is in this case. You're absolutely right. The gradient vector is you put this number here and you put this number here. But I want you to look at the relationship between this vector and the two directions you decided to step in order to calculate those partials. Look at this number. This is going to be a negative number. And this is a negative number. You just told me that. Now, which way is that vector pointing? I'll tell you roughly which way it's pointing. It's pointing this way. Somewhere here. To say it in, in Yoda's language. Somewhere here, the gradient is. Do, just look. And that's right. If you were to, if you were on a hill, and if you knew that by moving straight sideways, you go downhill and moving straight forward, you also go downhill, then you should turn around and go somewhere that way to go up the hill. The gradient is pointing in the direction of steepest increase, still in this example scenario you gave. It is ravioli bakery. I just, I just told you. Look, I mean, look. D dx is negative, a negative number. Okay, so this is negative. Yeah? D dy, you said, was negative too. Okay, this is negative. Which way does that point? It points right here. Right here. And this makes sense. Right? If... If you know that you go this step to the right, you're going downhill, and step forward, you're going downhill. Uphill is somewhere back left. And the gradient is agreeing with that intuition. Fantastic. All right, so the gradient points in the direction of steepest uh, increase. Always the elevation is increasing, the individual partials don't mean really anything um, in terms of uh, what you're... It's really the, the pair of numbers that has a geometric meaning, um, intrinsic meaning. Uh, the individual things can be either positive or negative, but that, that's fine. Okay, good. All right, um, Baby Grogu was uh, requested, and so here we go. Uh, over here. All right, so here's Grogu, and uh, I hope this makes your day. There's this. All right. Okay. Okay, and maybe you're gone. The person's probably gone. Uh, gaming. But yeah, Ravioli, new person. Welcome. Who else? All my students. Chapter 14.5. Read it. And compare with what I emphasize. Now, can you play the flute while juggling, though? Yes. Strawberry. Okay. Wait, you already made you you were already on in the list. You don't get two dopamines. You don't get twice dopamine. Oh, what book are we using? I don't remember. It's one of those standard ones. 
early transcendentals? I forget. Mm. Fand is here. Fand HC. Now, did you all know that Fand HC is a world class Diablo player? Shout out to the Gradient. Absolutely. Beautiful vector. Filled with meaning. And useful in just writing out tangent space calculations, if nothing else. Great. Uh, request recorder. All right. Well, we got to put Grogu back. Okay. All right. Do you guys want to do some, um, a little bit of just a little bit of gambling with this juggling? Or do you want it just be... Uh, PG-13. Nothing fancy. Pale Blue Zebra says yes. And Pale Blue Zebra is here, by the way. Will I be teaching the rest of the semester? Yes, I will be. Which is about, like, a little bit over a month and... Month and change. Which means I... Yeah. Oh, you lost all your points because of gambling? Hmm. What's a good... I think... 18 throws. Is that... Is that sensible? Or should we stick to 20? 20 throws? Or... Um, what should we gamble on? How many throws do you think I'll be able to do? What's right at the edge? No, 29, okay, that's silly. That's silly. We're not going to do 29 throws. Oh, so ravioli, the way it works is technically according to the rules and regulations, I can juggle five balls. That's true. Okay, because you got to be able to do a certain amount of throws. I think it's 20. Um, I can do that most of the time. So I do get to say that I can juggle five balls. That that's no one denies that. No one ever denies that. Okay. So we gamble on whether in the next t when I try five, whether I'm gonna reach twenty or not. Do you understand, Ravioli? Very simple. Okay, 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 fine. Toaster. Toaster's in here. Toaster. Toaster gets credit. Great student. Uh, substitute student. Awesome. Hey, Arbitry. Beloved mod. Okay, the prediction has started. Ah, ravioli. Not number of cycles, please. No. no. Just the number of individual throws, please. That's not what the rules and regulations say. I read them. Okay, don't re don't look it up. All right. NC yo, NC is here. Yeah, non-dairy neutrino streams. Mathematica. Okay, there you go. I did your I did your shout out. Anyone I miss here? I don't mean to. I I'm very good. Kappa, Kappa streams. And what is Kappa stream? Diablo number one. Everyone check out Kappa. Ch Chazers 199. Hello. Rockefeller. Wow. Such high, uh, high Rockefeller, huh? 
The Rockefeller? Rockefeller. Do you know how you make it to the top of this list? Mr. Rockefeller? Rockefeller. Is it the wrong Rockefeller? Hmm. All right. Never mind. All right, you guys ready to gamble? Here we go. I'm going to do... I get one warm-up. One warm-up, and then the execution. Got it? Those are the rules. The first thing I do is definitely a warm-up. All right, ready? Here we go. Here we go. While I'm doing this class, appreciate the beauty of this gradient vector. Okay, here we go. Y'all see this? You're gonna have to clip it in order to analyze the number of throws. All right, we're gonna have to do that. Why is my camera doing this? Let me, look at this, look at this technology, ready? Look at this. Look what I can do with the camera. Look at this, ready? Boom. You see that? Did you see that? Okay, first one. Warm up. Doesn't count. <sighs> that was a good one. I think that was the one again. Ah. Oh. Wait, was that 20? Was it 20? No? No? Five. I can do five, Pale Blue, because I can hit 20 throws sometimes. That was not... Chazers, you just came in here. You're a new person. Come on now. Be respectful. That was not 15 to 16. Okay, for real, for real. Okay, here it is, the real one. Ready? 20. No! No! <laughs> Forty-seven points, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, you're here. Easy money. How insensitive. Okay. All right. So who else gets credit? Kevin is here. Math math educator, fellow math educator. Awesome. Got a job. Math teacher. The okay, next crow is here. New chat feature in the third eye? No, 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 no. We're going to test that out right now. Let's check that out. Let's check this out. There's apparently new functionality in the third eye. Let's go check it out. Come on, let's just go. Class, of course, you're dismissed. Uh, read the chapter and uh, talk to me on Discord if you have any questions. Okay, let's go check this out. Apparently, there's something new in the boring grapher. Let's go check that out. Uh-huh, like this. Where did it go?
Okay. Okay. What's going on here? Okay, what's going on? Where is the chat? I don't see the chat. Chat? Oh my god, look at that! Look at that! Oh! <laughs> this is incredible! Whoa! Hey, Chazzers, say something. Say something, Chazzers. You're new. Wow, whatever that means. Okay. Oh, it doesn't do emotes. <laughs> okay, not quite emotes yet, but this is incredible. Kevin, why are you confused? Kevin. Huh? All right, I'm now Kevin. Kevin's first person view. <laughs> this is Kevin first person. First person, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Man, this is crazy. Good. Good start, NC. Very good. Huh, interesting. Mm hmm. That's really good. I can't believe I didn't notice it during lecture, but that's really cool. This is oh wait these emotes work. Hey math online problem solving. Okay, whatever that means. All right, here we go. Um, let's do this. Uh, math online problem solving. Hi, welcome back. Who else did I miss? Dream traveling. Welcome. We're just testing out our um educational software. And you know who made that? It's the person named Boring Professor Servant, AKA my little brother. Crazy. We just got chat functionality inside this space. If you notice, this is, you see all this like galaxies and stuff, the Shungite back there. This is my inner um, mind. It's a MRI technology. Great, good, good stuff there. Um, but we got chat now inside of this which is really cool i'm really happy about that incredible all right folks let's go back to my face all right who else was here fluffy fluffy's back welcome Great streamer. Oh, shout out. Fluffy. Fluffy Potato Girl. Great streamer. Great artist. What's the opposite of attend that's not leave? Good question. All right. So who, who, who are we going to raid now? Let's get out of here, folks. I'm pretty much done with all of you. Um, kind of tired of teaching today. Let's see, who's out there? Who? Okay, Famvox, if they're there, they're going to take, take us to some puzzle. Crossword puzzle thing. Yeah, yeah, who's out there? Exactly, who's out there? Who can we raid? Oh, Charneski. Eric Charneski. Let's beat him to it. Huh? No. He's not up. Bam. No. Is, is Prof Melko on? No. Hey, there's all kinds of other people with the name Professor. I wonder if we just go to... One of them plays Counter-Strike. 
That doesn't sound like a professor to me. Huh. Dream traveling. Thank you. Yeah, you want to go to Tom Thinks? Oh, that's really cool, Crow. That's really cool. Tom Thinks. That could be good. Wait, the, you wish the emote thing worked with animated emotes too? What do you mean? Oh, you mean when they put them up on the, when they show up on the screen, like the animation actually works? I don't know how to do that. I don't know which one we're supposed to use to do that. I know it's possible, but... Maybe someone in chat knows these things. This fancy Twitch stuff. But... Okay, but Tom thinks is pretty... Tom thinks is good. Let's go to... I don't think so. Wait, actually, I don't know. I don't know if it works, Arbitry. We'll, we'll try. We'll try it next time. No, it doesn't work. Okay. In super. Yeah, the window key and uh, yeah. Yeah, those emotes. Hmm. Interesting. Oh man, these people are so smart. And all these things about computers. Okay, ready? Tom thinks. Let's go to Tom thinks. Yeah. All right. Let's go check out Tom thinks. Have you read? Um, no, I don't think I've read that. I don't think so. Uh, uh, fanned HC. I don't think I've, I don't, I don't think I've read that. Is it just like biographical things about certain mathematicians? Um, how does a computer do Gaussian elimination? Well, there's a dumb way, right? That's really long. I don't, so I don't know any clever way. Okay. Is that, if that's what you're asking. I don't know the clever ways. But there's the, I mean, it's clearly something that a computer can do, right? I mean, if there's anything a computer can do, it should be able to do Gaussian elimination as algorithmically. But clever way, like fast, I don't know. If you're asking me how does it, what's the most, the fastest way to do it, I don't know. Oh, really, Fand? Oh, no. That... Fand, those might be the boomers. Um, Fand, that might be a boomer thing. And quite likely, yeah. So... Oh, well, I guess you use a LU decomposition. I, I, I think I once knew what that was. Yeah, fan. That sounds like a boomer thing for sure. Um. Yeah. <laughs> good one, VPS. Yeah, that's a that's a good dark, that's a good decomposition. Yeah, but crow. I mean, are you asking whether why it's at all possible to do it because I mean no you must be asking a you're asking the harder question which is how does it do it so fast or something 
Yeah, that kind of question, I don't know. But... That's the Galois theory in a, in a nutshell. Um, it's the... Uh, it's kind of the... Um, the culmination of the part of the story in mathematics that starts with the quadratic formula solving parabolas hitting the x-axis yeah uh can you solve harder and harder equations and then galois theory will tell you no after uh degree five and after it's going to be very 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 hard um it's like the, uh, solving polynomial equations in one variable. That's what Galois theory is about, in, in a nutshell. Yeah. So anyway, Crow, I don't know uh, any fancy, fast ways of doing it, but that it's doable seems completely straightforward. Look for zeros, and then if you got zeros, put them down. Put them at the put them at the bottom. Now you look at the top row, and it's got a non-zero thing. Hopefully, otherwise you scan to the right, and then cancel out everyone else's, and rinse and repeat. Seems completely algorithmic. Yeah. But. Anyway. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Tom Thinks and get this over with. Alright. The, the gradient is telling us to move in the direction of Tom Thinks. That will maximize our enjoyment. Okay, so we're going to do that. And it doesn't matter whether the gradient's components are positive or negative. The direction is telling us which way to go in order to go up fastest. Okay, I'll just shut up now. <laughs> 